because we often talk about we have to celebrate the wins, but what if you lose? Because we lose a lot in entrepreneurship. How do we cure? How do we self-soothe? And how do we self-regulate when we lose? Because failure is not an option, but it's a part of the process. And when you fail, how do you treat yourself? How do you tend to your mental health? That is most important and performant metric in your business structure and in your business planning. Our plan is here to keep us grounded to keep us centered, to keep us focused, to keep us collected. It Once is not you know the numbers, then it's a busy work. We would be better entrepreneurs if we stop treating our expectations and our business plan like a prophecy and like a promise to our businesses. Let me explain. Our plan is here to keep us grounded, to keep us centered, to keep us focused, to keep us collected. It is not a promise that we are going to achieve. Today, I would like to talk about business planning for 2025. I know it's not sexy. I know it is. It might be boring, but I would like to bring you a different perspective about planning and what you should have in mind and what you should have in place in your business regardless of your season that you're in right now. So let's talk about the goal setting and we're going to start with the revenue setting, then we're going to go uh, and talk about your lead generation and uh, your activities that you should do to uh, to hit your numbers. And also, we're going to talk about one number, one category that a lot of entrepreneurs and solopreneurs are missing. And it's your well-being, and it's your mental health, and it's your family. Because, listen, you can hit your numbers, you can run successful business, but if it ruins your mental health and it ruins your family, why does it matter? It doesn't matter. So... In this episode, we're going to hit all of the points. So grab your favorite drink, like get comfortable or go for a walk, go work out, like do whatever you have to do. And we're going to talk about goal setting. So let's talk about your revenue numbers. Listen, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of rah-rah coaching. Like, hey, let's hit a million this year and you just started out your business or and this is your second year and you are going for a million because everybody said that you should get a million okay so i don't think it is a realistic expectation and it's a realistic goal so this is my approach for your financial revenue you should have three goals you should have your absolutely bare minimum goal, meaning you pay yourself, you pay your bills, you pay your team, like you're good. You're not happy good, but you're good. Like you are in business. You like you you have a cash flow at some sort. You have some sort of money. So this is your bare minimum goal to keep yourself in business. And maybe it is a maintenance goal. And it's like, okay, if I hit that goal, I can be in maintenance mode. I can maintain my business. And at the same time, I won't be desperate for a sale. I can just analyze and I can just strategize what I need to improve in my business. I will be okay. Not happy, but okay and grateful for maintenance goal. So this is bare minimum. Now, the next goal that you should have, the next revenue goal that you set for your business, it's a good goal. A good goal or a fair goal is the goal uh, is the goal that you are um, you would like to grow and exceed your expectation and exceed your revenue from last year. So, for example, let's say you made like certain amount of money, add extra and you know like good extra for example uh you made let's say you made 200k last year or 250k last year add another hundred add, a, add another hundred like can you make an can you make another hundred or what is the good goal for you maybe an, a lot maybe extra 50k like i don't know what good looks for you but 
set a good goal for your revenue for 2025. This is a good goal and meaning that you grew financially. And I would normally set something like 10, 20% growth as a good goal. 10, 20% growth for my business, it's amazing. And now the next goal is your stretch goal. This is the number that makes you uncomfortable. That, that is the number that like, ooh, I don't know if I can get there. I don't know if I can do that. And the, with, with the stretch goal, with a perfect goal, it's like the, the, the point is not to get the goal, not to achieve that goal, even though you can. And it's, it's to challenge yourself. And if you achieve your stretch goal, meaning you just made your ceiling your floor and you should go higher, bolder, brighter, at full capacity, at full speed, which is absolutely can happen. So, but with that stretch goal, even if you achieve, I don't know, like 5% of that goal, 10% of that goal, 20% of that goal, it's a win. It's a big win. But remember, stretch goal should be uncomfortable. Should be like, ooh, like it, it should be made you all, almost like, I don't know if I should set that number. Like, no, you should. This is a strategy goal. So this is the financial goal. Now, uh, for each number, for each number, you can reverse engineer your revenue based on your conversion rate. And your conversion rate is essential number to keep uh, to pay attention to. If you catch my live streams, my presentations, my posts from last week, you know there are three numbers in conversion, three conversions, cold conversion, messy middle, and final conversion. Let me say it again. Cold conversion, messy middle, and final conversion. What is a cold conversion? Cold conversion is when people say yes, they raise their hand, they sign up, they book a call, they start consuming your freebie. They like they 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 said initial yes. They went on a date with you. They gave you their number. They say yes, I want to chat with you. They didn't say yes, I want to marry you yet. They said like okay, I want to check it out. So this is a cold conversion. What is a messy middle? Messy middle is when people actually follow through. They say, yes, I want to be on the call with you. Yes, I want to come to your webinar. Yes, I want to come to your event. And they do so. So they follow through. Because listen, a lot of people are going to like fall off, not follow through. Um, the messy middle. So, and the final conversion is your conversion when people say yes to you and they buy. So, three conversions that you have to track. And based on where you have a problem, where you like, what conversion rate you are struggling with will determine what problem you have. If it is a cold conversion, it is your messaging. Like, People don't understand what it is for them. If it is a messy middle, it is a follow-up. If it is a final conversion, this is your sales skills. So, and once you know that, you know how many leads you need to reach out to. Let's say your conversion rate is uh, like is 10%. So, um, meaning like, let's say um, out of 10 people, Let's say two people say yes, something like that. T uh, two people say yes. So, and you need to hit your numbers. You need, let's say, 10 people. So how many people you need to reach out to? Once you know the numbers, then it's a busy work. Then like, okay, to hit my numbers, I need to reach out to 50 people. I need to reach out to 100 people. I need to reach out to 20 people. I need to, based on your conversion rate. And then you just and then you just go through the numbers. And again, considering three conversions, like okay, who like if my messy middle is struggling, so I probably need to overperform on 
cold conversion because in the messy middle, a lot of people are not going to follow, uh, follow through. A lot of people are not going to show up. And I possibly need to get up to speed with my follow-ups and reminders and make sure that they remember and make sure that they they come and then and make sure that they like there's some sort of follow-up replay game whatever it is so that's a messy middle and then like what at the end of the day what brings you conversion like on the final day so like that that's the that's the math that's the math so and uh Listen, on Black Friday for black businesses, we're going to dive deeper into this topic. We're going to dive deeper into business planning. And uh, we're going we're gonna to tell you exactly how to calculate your conversion rate, how to um, adjust based on your area like that you struggle with, what you fix based on your area, what you struggle with, and how to adjust your numbers. So the, the registration link for this event, on, it's on Black Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific t uh, Standard Time or in the afternoon Eastern Standard Time. The link is in the show notes. The link is in the, for the description for this video. So go ahead and register. Now, let's talk about let's talk about the very important number and very important um, area that a lot of entrepreneurs may not be thinking about. And this is your mental health. Before you schedule anything on your calendar, make sure that you prioritize your rest, your family, and joy factor. Because listen, Entrepreneurs and solopreneurs are two big groups that have significant divorce rate. And it is because we often think that our well-being, that our mental health can take a backseat or we, we can put it on the back burner simply because we don't see the revenue from that particular activity. Simply because we think, okay, I'm not hitting my numbers. I need to work. I need to work harder. I need to work harder. I need to work harder. And something that I heard from my partner was ever since you started your business or since I'm here, all I've been seeing is stress, 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 stress. And you know, like it really hit me really hard because listen, I'm a clinical psychologist and I thought I would like, well, obviously I know how to care for myself, but the reality is, no, I did not prior in 2024, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong and I did not prioritize my well-being, my mental health, my rest in my business plan. I thought I knew how to take care of myself. I said, well, I go for a walk. I go to the beach. I like, I, I, I built my business around my lifestyle. So what else do I need? I did not prioritize therapy. I did not prioritize, um, uh, joy factors such as my birthday. My birthday was a last minute planning and it was like my partner was kicking and screaming and say, hey, you need to you need to love on yourself. You're working all day. You're working all year. You're walking. You're working all week. So this is your birthday. Go and enjoy yourself because you can't just work. You go work yourself to the ground. And that is, that is something resonate, and that resonated with me really, really strongly. So before you hit your numbers, before you plan your numbers, make sure that you prioritize your mental health. Because what is the point of building your business? What is the point of being successful if at the end of the day, you're going to be burned out, sad, depressed, stressed, and alone? Think about it. Like, really, really think about it. So, 
before you put any numbers like for your launches, for your outreach, for your lead generation, for your marketing, for your um, campaigns, think about it. Have you scheduled your joy factor, your birthday, your loved one birthday, like your vacation? Have you planned your vacation for next year? What is your vacation? What is your joy factor? How do you? How are you going to celebrate if you hit your numbers? And also, how are you going to care for yourself and treat yourself with kindness if life happens, if numbers don't hit, if the revenue is not where you want it to be? Do you have that option? Self care option, self soothing option. Because we often talk about, we have to celebrate the wins. But what if you lose? Because we lose a lot in entrepreneurship. How do we cure? How do we self soothe? And how do we self regulate when we lose? Because failure is not an option, but it's a part of the process. And when you fail, how do you treat yourself? How do you tend to your mental health? That. Is most important and performant metric in your business structure and in your business plan, your mental health well-being. Plan your celebration. Plan your victory lap. Plan your victory vacation. Like, okay, if I hit my net revenue number, I'm going to Bali, or I'm going to Spain, or I'm whatever it is for you. What if you don't? What if you don't? What? What? How are you going to self-center, self-soothe, and heal yourself if you don't? Maybe it's a get a smoothie. Maybe like I mean, healthy in a healthy way, in a healthy way.、Um, maybe it is going to a yoga class. Maybe it is scheduling meditation session at the well like wellness center. Maybe it is going to a spa, May, like whatever it is for you. Prioritize your mental health. Your family and your future self will thank you. Join me for Black Friday for Black Businesses on November twenty ninth、um, at nine o'clock in the morning Pacific Standard Time, in the afternoon Eastern Standard Time, and prioritize your well being. It's going to be amazing. See you there.